We'll have this discussion. Discussion? What discussion? This is a discussion. Combustion. Coming to you from Denver, Colorado, this is Discussion Combustion Podcast with your hosts, Kevin Batstone and Arthur Raw. Oh, you got a hat, too. <laughs> I love it. I mean, I had to get a hat, didn't I? I needed a hat. If you guys have hats, I got to have a hat. Hey, so, we're going casual today, man. <laughs> and, it, you know, if, I don't know why my thing keeps doing that, but so it goes. It's no, okay, I, man. Your background looks good, I think. It does look good. Well, thank you. You know, it's a physical background. Um, I'm actually on the new one, the one with gravity. NASA decided I was a high value asset. They brought me up here to ride this one out, you know? No. I'm Terrific. It's, but it's physical. <laughs> so. That is, that's, I mean, I like how you have it holding the book and stuff too, man. You know? <laughs> I had to, you know? <laughs> that's how you promote. Love it. Yeah, so, so, so uh, since it's International Women's Day, I've got a yes. three weavers here, which is a, a woman run a brewery with a with a female head brewer. And, well, you know, cheers. Women have cheers good to taste. that. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers yeah. to that. Yeah. Thanks for joining Discussion Combustion to be a part of the show tonight. Um, you know, big shout out to obviously Sean Antonio and Andrea Templeton. They, they said, hey, we got to get you guys hooked up with John. We were on board immediately started doing some research like man this guy's epic let's get him on the show you're here now man thanks for joining us i'm really happy to be with you guys and thanks to andrea and sean from me as well yeah we're super we're super excited i mean not only because you help people speak like leaders speak like a leader your podcast is awesome we were, we were giving that a couple listens and looks Thank you. um but just in general general you've done a lot of great things in your life and and um and really made an impact on a lot of people. And so it's, it's just so great to have somebody with great energy in here. Even the little interaction that I've had with you prior to, to hitting this record button, like I'm laughing already, man. So yeah, we're just, we're just really excited to be rubbing shoulders with somebody of amazing caliber, you know? So, so what's, what, what do you think are some of your biggest crowning achievements in, in your professional career? Would you say, you know, there are a few moments for me that are, truly bucket list moments and 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 i think we're going to talk about this later but let me just say before those bucket list moments there were a lot of moments when i was like on my knees crying so hard boogers were coming out you know so we'll talk about that but but before we talk about that a couple of the bucket list i'm looking right now at a frame that i had custom made that has a picture of the international space station crew with two people that i know really well now and uh it's got a little note from a guy named chris cassidy who's the former navy seal who then became an astronaut and now works at the medal of honor uh, museum and then a picture of him doing a spacewalk that's signed to me you know, and wow. he wrote, John, it's really hard to keep the attention of a group of astronauts for very long. Like, not only did you have our attention all, you know, all afternoon, but we were on the edge of our seats waiting for more, you know, thanks for your great training. I mean, <laughs> you know, I don't know how I beat that. Now, but, now have um, you been to space yourself or? I have not. I have not. Okay. I, only in my fantasies, you know. <laughs> but, uh, but I haven't been to space, but I did get to train all the active astronauts a couple years ago and have ended up becoming friends with a number of them. And so that's bucket list. And then um, this hat that I'm wearing is from the Commodore of uh, Fleet 52, which uh, he was the Commodore for uh, EOD Group One before that. And I got to go train his whole group. I got to help with a big Navy document that he was working on. and. I still talk with him on a regular basis and get to do training for him on a regular basis. That was pretty huge. He wrote me a, a letter of recommendation that I have over here that I look at on the days I'm having a bad day. And I just try to be the guy he says I am. Oh, nice. Uh, and, uh, and then, you know, I just, I just got to come from um, a, a retreat where I was with a bunch of people that I've got, that I got the chance to work with a couple years ago and then COVID. But, uh, you know, and these are people like 
people who have lawn care businesses and people who have accounting businesses and small business owners. And, you know, one woman is a chiropractor with a, with a really great talent for essential oils and stuff. And sorry, I'm going to um, put it on do not disturb. I should have done that already. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, no, but, you're good, man. But uh, so, you know, and I got to be with these people again after a few years and I had the experience that is just, it's why I get out of bed on, a, on you know, because like it's tough right now. We're talking while Ukraine's going on and like it's mm. scary and I'm bummed and I'm, I'm having a hard time concentrating. But I get out of bed because of what I heard last week from people about how I made a difference in their life. You know, I changed the way they communicate. And one woman came up to me and said, John, you know, I, maybe I learned this from you. I don't know, but I've been saying a lot. Unclear communication is unkind. And I said, well, you may have learned that from me, but that saying is all you, Linda. Hmm. And so I'm quoting Linda, you know, but but she says that, you know, the training that I gave her just made a life altering difference. And, you know, so it doesn't have to be astronauts and soldiers and like another bucket list is that i i trained this wonderful woman named melinda richter years ago she ended up her company was called prescience pre-science they ended up getting acquired by johnson and johnson she's now the global head of johnson and johnson innovations j labs wow. and i'm training all the heads of sites for johnson and johnson's j labs right now they got a bunch of new people i'm training them i've trained coached melissa melinda for the past 10 years, you know, she told me she was going to take me with her everywhere she went because she thought what I had was special. So those are some of the things that come to mind for me. And, and I pinch myself when I tell you. Yeah. This. Yeah. It's like, holy yeah. e epic resume, John. Yeah. The boxes. I, you know, and, <laughs> yeah. and listen, let's talk about all the stuff that happened before that, that was anything but that. Yeah. I, I mean, know? we'd love to hear about that because that's the thing is when people see success and they see a successful person, that's all they see. Yeah. They just, yeah. yeah. And it's compartmentalized at that point. They don't see the hard times. They don't see the struggles. Yeah. It's just, they just see you now. They don't see what, yeah. what it all took. And I love yeah. hearing those stories. You got to fail to succeed. And I'm excited to dive into this. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, I mean, should I, you want, should I tell you a little bit about some of that stuff? Yeah, I mean, well, like early on, you know, like, let's say, you know, maybe you're in your early 20s, like trying to get started with like, what, what were some of the things, you know, I'm sure you went to school, everything like that. Did you did you serve as well? Or I didn't serve. I it's one of the things that I sort of feel bad about. I wanted to go into the Marine Corps and fly close air ground support for the United States Marines, because my dad was, you know, captain in the Marine Corps. And I grew up with the great Santini and I, I was definitely you know usmc all the way you know but they wouldn't let me fly because one of my eyes wasn't good enough so i ran away with my rock band instead <laughs> so, oh you're a rocker too <laughs> jesus john <laughs> <laughs> so you know so much for really being of service right but uh but um but yeah so you know i grew up in salt lake city i grew up mormon um, I gave that up for Lent, but I'm still very happy about my heritage and really, really glad that I grew up in a religion that has so much family and love. And, you know, there's so much good about that religion. And I'm just not religious, but I'm quite spiritual and very grateful for that background. I'm right there um, with you. You know, and I mean, and here's the thing, like, I, you know, I... I'm just glad I didn't die before I was 40 because I was a freaking jerk and I was really fun. I was a nice guy. I like people. I didn't try to hurt anybody, but I just didn't get, I didn't realize how much it was all about me. You know, mm. it was just fun and me and you know, blah, blah, blah. And then when I was 40, uh, I, did this thing called the landmark forum which you guys maybe have heard of um andrea and sean have both done it and it was a personal growth and development course that just utterly i mean it really was a landmark in my life like 
before mm. and after that. I feel like I went into that totally confused about who I was and what I wanted. And, you know, I'd been having a fun life, but stuff wasn't really working. And I walked out of there clear on, wow, you know, I have not been being who I really want to be. And I want to be the guy I, I, that I can imagine myself as not this kind of selfish, you know, jerk, like really fun jerk. I wasn't, I mean, people liked me, I, you know, but God, I was just so selfish. I just really didn't get the concept of being of service to anyone but me, you know? Mm -hmm. and, well, and I feel like a lot of people are, are get into that place in their lives and, and yeah. they're there. So yeah, everybody's kind of guilty of being like that at one point. Yeah. So I won't beat myself up too bad. Um, I, I gave up beating myself up. It doesn't help. And it just yeah. makes it so nobody else can trust me to be safe around me. But, you know, I think that I, I was definitely one of those people who did not know what I wanted to do. I mean, I, like I have a best, my best friend, I want to be a doctor, just did it, follow the steps. He's a doctor, you know, and um, I was anything but that. Um, and, and I guess I should, I guess, you know, I think the place to, to kind of start the whole thing is uh, it's, it's October 20th, 2000. And it's seven days before my birthday. And our, we, I'm at a company called bigwords.com. I'm one of four co-founders. I am the face of the company. We've been really succeeding so far, you know, like winning all kinds of awards for our clever marketing. We've, we didn't buy Super Bowl ads. We were much smarter than that, blah, blah, blah. And now all our investors, after we've raised over $80 million, have just told us that they don't think we're going to be profitable fast enough. The market has <clears throat> changed. We've done a good job doing what we were trying to do, but there's just not enough runway and they don't think we're going to be profitable fast enough and they're going to pull the plug. So I basically get tossed out on my butt like everybody else. And we end up across the street at the 21st amendment crying in our beer. And this is the company that I publicly said, I'm putting my soul on the line for this, you know? Mm. And for the past three, four years, I've been sleeping four or five hours a night. I've been on planes, trains, automobiles, going all over the country, even all over the world, talking about the new economy and talking about our company and getting us great press and doing business development. And, uh, you know, it was just like so great, you know? And then boom, now like, I got nothing and we're done. And there wasn't even, you know, we didn't even know how to stay in touch because they turned off all the servers. And so our emails didn't work anymore. And, oh, right? and, and I went into a corner and just cried about it and almost died of an autoimmune disease called some version of some weird version of Stevens Johnston syndrome. And uh, you know, what happens is you get, ulcers in your mouth you get ulcers in your eyelids all your mucous membrane starts to ulcer out really fast then you get dots on your skin and that's from stress connect. or what what is that from the autoimmune disease right yeah from stress and lack of sleep and then when mm. the when the dots connect on your skin your skin sloughs off you go blind and die in the burn unit and so i'm now sitting in the a bed at ucsf in san francisco at their hospital and thank heavens that they even know what it is, but they're still not sure they can save me. Right? Like I'm sitting there thinking that there is a very good chance that I am not going to walk back out of the hospital alive. And I had Jeez. this moment where I looked back on my life. I'd already done the landmark forum, you know, so that was kind of a bonus. Um, and I was like, wow, you know, I don't want that to be my legacy. Like, I don't want to be, I don't want this to be how, what I did with my life. And I said to the universe, I call it big is, I said, big is if you will let me live and let me walk out of here, I promise that the only thing that I will care about from now on is making a difference. And I got to walk out. I was not okay for a long time. It took me a long time to recover from that. I, I had more incidents and stuff, but every day since then has been gravy. 
because I kept my promise and I remembered how much I wanted to live. And so every day I wake up and I look around, I, I is like my dad used to say, the combat Marine, I'm above ground. It's a good day. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, and I, and yeah. I kept my promise that I, and I've really kept my focus on making a difference. And it was, it, would, it was a little while after that that I started doing what I'm doing now. I, I'm happy to tell you that story too. It's kind of funny. Um, but, but that was probably the big aha moment of my whole freaking life so far was staring down the barrel of like, you're probably going to die and really having to getting that chance to, to like ha get a second chance, you know, unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, that's I, powerful. Know, it changed my life. I mean, that's, that's the pivotal moment in John Bates life. When you look back and peel the layers back, when you made yeah. that promise and that commitment that this is what I'm going to do. I yeah. mean, that, that's, that's pretty epic, man. You know, I, I, I'm trying to think if I have that kind of moment of, of commitment and, and change in yeah. life, I feel like that's a, a strong commitment right there and, and something to be reminded of. I'm sure on the bad days too, you think, man, I, I got to keep this train moving. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm here to make a difference, right? I can't let anything stop me. I can't let success stop me. I can't let failure stop me. I'm here to make a difference. Let's let's get out of bed today, John. I know you don't feel like it, you know? Absolutely. Well, so, so I could open up with you a little bit because um, I've had one of those bigger moments where, you know, it was a definitive mental change, which was now a lifestyle change, not just a 30-day change. And of course, all the listeners know, but... Um, yeah, I had a major opiate addiction for like 12 years. It took me five years after acknowledging it to actually get off of it. Like, so I uh -huh. was disappointing myself and lying for those five years. And yeah, that's it. It's been about it. It's been about a year, though. It's been about yeah. a year. And the how I'm tying this into what you're saying is that mentality shift that you you like. It's like a second chance. Like, and, yes. and it's just and you're so grateful. Like, it's hard to yeah. explain Yes. Like how grateful every day and like well, every little thing that you, it, it all means so much more after you've nearly lost it all or yeah. nearly died. And, and yes. so like, yeah, it's, 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 it's super crucial, man. Yeah. Have you ever read the book power versus force? Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. That's a big moment. Yeah. You're one of the only people that's ever mentioned that book to me that that's, that's the the rest of the iceberg for me. Okay. The, the tip well, of the, hey. the tip of the iceberg was mind power in the 21st century, but power versus force, the hidden detriments of human behavior, is kind of my bible. So yeah. I I love you that know, it changed the way I talk. Scale yeah. of human. That's epic that you read that, somewhere. man. Yeah, and let's all get the courage at least, people. Let's at least be at courage. Oh, dude, that's such a great book. That book blew my mind and the whole concept yes. of the two things i mean you know the the scale of human consciousness so going from shame to anger is actually coming up in consciousness yes i was like oh wow Do, you know and how like, pride the, is the strongest negative pride is the strongest you know negative. pride is the strongest that. negative that's strong enough to run the marine corps it's strong enough to to do all these things. Yes, but that's it's still the strongest one that's still not positive. Negative. Yeah. yeah. And then it goes courage. And like, yep. you, you know, we all fluctuate on that. Yep. I would like to say my average is like around awareness and neutrality. I would like yep. to say that. But, you know, we all fluctuate. We all go down, up and down. Well, so and I love you that, that like, you know, people like, like Albert Einstein and all these great scientists bonk at 499, which is the top of reason. Because to get to the next level of human consciousness, which is love, you have to give up reason, right? Mm. And it works so well, you know? And, and, I, I, and the other thing that I think is really interesting is, uh, you know, it changed how I saw addiction. It, because addiction is an attempt by people to get to a higher consciousness level. It just doesn't keep you there, right? And Yeah, it's, it's false. It's a... Uh... Yeah. It's a and fake so, way. And, and look like, uh, sorry, because you brought up that one thing, but there's, you know, I used to do opiates, used to feel euphoria from that. Yeah. But now at this point, like I'll, I'll go on like a nice long walk and be really appreciating life. And yeah. I'll, I'll feel that same euphoric feeling for like 30 seconds. 
but it's natural now. And, yes. and so it, it means yeah. a lot. It's so that's cool. That's well, really and cool. You, you, it sounds like you are in those moments, right. And in your life in general, you have traded that for actually lifting your consciousness up in a sustainable, natural way. And I, I acknowledge you for that. That's really awesome. And what a great book. Yeah. That's a I mean great, that, that book. Okay. Read. Like I, I'm going to tell people <laughs> that that book is, you know, that's like extra, extra college level reading. Like you have to really dive deep and write down words you don't understand. Maybe search what it means. Yeah. So if you're going to read it, give yourself time because there's a lot of specific, they, they calibrated their sentences after writing them to give them more truth in, yes. in it. So yeah. like, it's very, you've been talking about this book for well over a decade and, yeah. and uh, you know, I may mean, have seen a lot of the points. And now is, is power verse force the one that, that touches on kinesiology yes. or is that yes. mind power? It all comes okay. out of it, okay. which, which, and I, in, and listen, there's a part of me that's very rational and thinks kinesiology <laughs> is kind of hooey. And I, and, and I'm still open to all kinds of stuff like that. I think that at the very least, it's a way to give our, to give us some sort of lens on chaos in terms, and I mean in terms of like the chaos that has rhythm and uh, like like not true chaos, but chaos like what we see in the universe, right? Like looking at the stars, that's a chaotic fractal pattern. So, but reading this book, I don't care how he did it. I don't care if he like used toenail shavings to get the <laughs> insights that he got, whatever he did freaking worked. And it's not like I'm going to necessarily do all my investing based on kinesiology, but wow, what he accomplished with that gave me a whole new space for like, just, okay. It's a, you know, it's a new lens it, of looking okay. through life through, like yeah. it's a brand yeah. new lens. And, and honestly, the information in there is kind of like, like that first chapter where he's describing, you know, being caught in that snowstorm and the experience yeah. that he had that while really in that self. Yeah. Like I was kind of like, this dude's bugging out. He's, he's <laughs> tripping. He's not on any drugs. I'm like, what is this book? But like, yeah. like you keep reading and, and you keep uncovering and it, it really, um, it means so much. That's yeah. so cool that, that you read that book and definitely recommend it to anybody out there. Well, one, one last thing, right? Because the bummer is that, you know, use the force is kind of on the wrong side of the meaning of the title, but it's okay. I think use the force means use the power in, in, you know, these terms, but I love the description of what's going on, right? Power versus force in a world of force. There is not enough force in the universe to lift yourself up by your own bootstraps because in a world of force, force you grab your bootstraps you pull hard on your bootstraps up but there's an equal and opposite force pushing down that keeps you stuck right in a world of power you just become more buoyant and rise to whatever level you want to rise to i'm like <laughs> well i gotta think about that for a second you know <laughs> yeah. but that's a really really powerful metaphor <laughs> So I, I picked up the extended edition recently and I started rereading it again. And um, cause it's been probably over 10 years since I, I, just I really read, read that. I have a leadership course that I do. And we just, mm -hmm. that was just one of our books. So I'm really fresh off reading it too. And, and, and one more thing, cause we could plug this book the whole time. We could talk about all the stuff in that, but um, yeah. for anyone interested and, and you want to get one of those natural highs where you feel good af after doing something like a runner's high, just read a chapter in that book because yeah. the, the knowledge is so pure and and just non-corrupt. And, and like it has yeah. this like when you're done reading it, you kind of just feel euphoric. Yeah. yeah, I felt like it, it increased my consciousness level. Well, what did it say? It like brings you up 35 it. points. Yeah, it's like 35 yeah. points automatically. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, really that's good. really cool right, stuff. So we should probably talk about something else, but <laughs> yeah, I know we're going to be I mean, great, like great book for the for the listeners. <laughs> yeah. And like, clearly we got something from it, right? Mm -hmm. So, yes. Yeah. I mean, I got something for it, not even reading it cover to cover. I understand <laughs> some of the, the scales, the kinesiology. I've, I've heard a lot from art, of course, and I even feel like my level has come up from it. 
<laughs> so yeah. this book carries a lot of weight for sure. But uh, a lot of things carry a lot of weight in life, you know, and yeah, the, the challenges that we got to overcome, John, and, and the struggles, you know, that's, that's part of the beauty of waking up and getting back at it, you know, and yeah. you kind of touched on some of the things you had your pivotal moment. What kind of happened next? Where, where, where was your focus? Where did you want to go from there? Well, so how I got to what I'm doing now is uh, I was, you know, I had lost my company. I'd been doing some consulting, like nothing was really working very well. I worked for an online game company and, you know, was not making very much money and going slightly further in debt. And I, I was probably about, oh God, I even hate to even think about it. I was probably 40 or 50 grand in debt, the 30 or 40 Ooh. grand in debt, you know? And I, and I, so I, so I was working really hard, not making enough money, going slightly further in debt. And then I, uh, I got, so, and I was always the guy with the soft skills. Like for my whole career, I was the guy with soft skills, did the business development, was the, I always got the title chief evangelist. I was always a founder or a co-founder or a single digit employee at dot-com companies. Overall raised a couple hundred million with my various teams in Silicon Valley and beyond, but never had a really successful exit yet. There's still one company that might, but you know. Um, but so I was always in debt working for too little money and too many stock options that never got liquid, right? And then that dried up, but I had, but just before that, I went to the TED conference and at the TED conference, I saw person after person give unbelievable speeches that just blew me away. And I remember thinking, wow, you know, like I've been a public speaker my whole life, but I have never done that. So I came back from TED, got really into the TED and TEDx community. And I was at one of the first ever TEDx events that was in Santa Monica, run by some friends of mine. <laughs> They're all volunteer efforts. So I was volunteering for them. And we had this guy who was gonna speak that day. I was super excited to hear him. He had the most exciting topic for me. And when he got up on stage and started to talk, everybody in the audience checked out because he was so nervous and awkward that we all thought we were gonna throw up. And wow. I remember being really, really, really sad because I, not only for him, but I'd also just seen that so much in my life with so many of the people that I worked with or people that spoke at the conferences I attended and stuff. So I was really, really sad. And then the evil part of me came out. And I remember sitting okay. there going, ha, 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 neener, 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 you know, quietly to myself, of course. But, you know, hard skills guy is blowing it, calls what I do, fluffy, neener, right? So as I was, okay. indulging, the, <laughs> as I was indulging the evil part of myself, my buddy came over, Michael Weiss, I'll never forget. And he said, dude, we got to do something to help people like this. And it was like, the most powerful aha moment of my life. Just, I, it was like the clouds parted, the angels sang, the lights turned on. And I was like, if I just got over myself for five freaking minutes, I could totally make a difference for that guy. If I stopped honoring this stupid chip on my shoulder and I started honoring the- Yeah, get that right chip out of here. Ain't nobody yeah, wanted those- chip. Get that <laughs> yeah. chip out, right? And I, and, and so I went home that night and I started thinking about, I started working on what I now got, got to deliver to the astronauts and, you know, all, all the other people that I talked about. I mean, this is where that started. And so what are you like 42, guy, 43 at this point? Like, where, where are you at? No, gosh, dude, this was, uh, I don't know. I was... I was older. I'm I'm 58 now. So this was 10. So I was like 40s, you know. I was in my 40s, early 40s, I guess. Um, okay. Or late or mid 40s, and uh, so yeah. So like, listen, you, 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 even if you're totally lost and you're listening to this, you're probably way ahead that, of me. That's what I was getting at. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, all the people who want to count themselves out so early. Yeah. Yep, no, it's no, never no, too no, late no, to no. own it. No, dude, if I would have been willing to count myself out, I would have, I would have tapped out so long ago. Uh, I would have gotten nowhere close. Right. I, I mean, it's yeah. Oh my gosh. No, I was, I was probably in my mid forties and listen, 
I was kind of freaking out. I didn't know what I was going to do, you know? Well, and that's fair, fun. right? Yeah, dude. And that's scary, you know, but I went home and I started thinking about how am I going to do this? And, and I had a big insight. I realized I needed to base everything I did in human evolutionary biology and human neurophysiology. So I could show people, particularly people with the hard skills, not only what works when it comes to communicating with and leading and inspiring and, and creating trust among human beings, but also why it works based in science. And that just changed everything. Now, for anybody that thinks it was overnight, let me just tell you the facts here. I did that and I started working on that. And when I did that, I was probably by that point, I was 40 grand in debt. And I started doing, you know, I put this train together and I started trying to figure out where I, I, didn't, I had no idea how to do any of this. Right. But I started trying to find places that wanted me to come do a training for them or organizations or whatever. And, you know, or could I speak? And I had a lot of things where it was like, well, you know, do you have a budget for this? And like, no. And I'm like, well, do you have any kind of a speaker stipend and they're like no and i'm like will you pay my gas money and they're like no and i'm like okay i'll be there you know yeah. <laughs> and sometimes it would stop earlier in that chain but i would just go do it anyway right and i would give them my absolute best no matter what and word of mouth started happening and i started getting invites and so for the first year i went further in debt you know but then the second year things sort of were break even and then the third year I made more than I had ever made in my life. Then I doubled that plus, then I tripled that plus, and then I kind of bonked around. And, you know, so COVID sort of slowed me down. I did a decent pivot. I had a lot of great clients that kept, you know, that, that kept me alive. Um, but, but I think that, you know, it, it really taught me why people say do what you love and i know a lot of people are like oh yeah well you do what you love man. the cliches okay. but they're so true they're right. true well i mean and listen if what you love is you know biting farts in the bathtub that's not going to make a lot of money you know don't <laughs> biting do what you love and expect to, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get that visual i, I got a visual i shouldn't have happened but <laughs> <laughs> but you know i mean like if like but when you have something that's a value to other people and you love to do it, that's a great thing to do. And here's why, because if you don't love doing what you're doing, there's a very good chance you will not do it long enough to ever succeed. Cause it's easy to be an overnight success when you've been doing something for 10 years. And if you don't <laughs> love it enough, to still be doing it really well and with excitement and enthusiasm in 10 years, then probably you should find something else. That's so true, man. All device. I mean, that, that's, that's really inspiring for, for any business, you know, any entrepreneur, like, you know, I, I listen to a lot of mo like motivational stuff and, and I hear that same story a lot and not to say that your story doesn't have meaning. It has so much meaning because you have to, you have to like persevere and, and push through and be definitive and commit fully to finally get to the promised land. Like you were 40 grand debt, you know, it takes yeah. hard risk, hard risk. Yeah. I mean, well, you know, but, now let me tell you another part about that, right? Because I don't want to encourage anybody to just say, I love this. I'm going to go do it no matter what. I'm just going to keep charging it. Right. You got to do something that works. Right. Because the funny thing about sustainability is you have to sustain it, right? So you need to make money at what you're doing. And I am all for taking risks, but I like them to be calculated risks. I like them to be thought out. And people will, people, you know, I had a friend early in this time period, he came and he saw me do the first time that I ever did my training thing in front of anybody I did a group for TEDx San Diego and my friend was there, Kelly. And afterwards he walked down, waited till everybody else was gone. And he put his hands on my shoulders and he looked at me in the eyes and he said, John, you were born to do this. You need to burn the boats. 
Oh, hell yeah. yeah. The honest to God truth is I did not have the courage to burn the boats, but they caught fire anyway. <laughs> and at <laughs> okay. least I didn't put them out, right? Like. I couldn't put them out. I, 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 but, but so the boats burned, but it wasn't because I was so brave. But there was something too being backed into a corner. I had just gotten married. I loved my wife. I wanted to give her a great life. And all of a sudden, the one kind of half podunk job thing that I was doing dried up and was gone. And I remember sitting there one day right about that time crying so hard because I, I was so scared and angry and sad and had no idea what I was going to do. I was crying so hard. Boogers were coming out and I don't know what she doesn't usually do this kind of stuff, but my wife texted me. I love you. I believe in you. You know, maybe she felt something. I don't know. She didn't see me crying. She was gone. The, right? the intuitive but, network is, is spot on. There you go. And, and so that just made me cry even harder for a few minutes. And then I blew my nose really good. And I just started, I think it was early days of LinkedIn or something. And I just sent a message to every freaking person I knew and told them, you know, you know, here's what I do, you know. And by the end of that day, I had closed a big deal with Motorola and we were off to the races. Outstanding. Yeah, that's a man talking about blowing out the boogers and getting refocused. That's a moment <laughs> I think that we all have to go through at some point to really figure out what what are we going to do to give us that sense of fulfillment and a sense of joy, a sense of purpose that we want to wake up and get active with. And maybe it doesn't come right away. Maybe, you know, some people figure it out early. Some people figure it out later. Some people figure yeah. it out in the moment. Right, John? You yeah. know, I mean, it's, it's the trials and tribulations. And I don't even know if I figured it out yet, but I think I'm trying to. Yeah. Well, look, you don't have to figure it out. You don't have to know right now. Here's the thing, though, that I think um, don't wait to be excellent. Be Ooh. excellent now, whatever you're doing. I mean, like if you're a waiter, be a freaking excellent waiter. And if you're a janitor, be a freaking excellent janitor. And whatever it is you're doing right now, that may not be your life's purpose. I get it. Right. But yeah Do hold yourself thing. to that degree of excellence because yeah. that's 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 creating energy that's creating um a new routine you know yeah. build yourself up you are an expert in your field you fucking crush the game every day and that's what you tell yourself and that that's yeah, what's and needed to really get through some of the hard times like like i've been there man kevin's been there like we're we're like oh i don't feel like doing this today i don't know if i got it in me right now and like we know that that's time. You you've heard the motivational thing go all the way. Go if you're way. going to do it, go all the way. Have you heard that one? I have. It's it, it's like a two minute clip. We'll send it to you uh -huh. after this. It's yeah. epic. Right. It's an epic one. You're gonna like okay. it. I listen all to right, it every good. morning. <laughs> well, and you know, um, I mean, there is something to being willing to be excellent in anything, right? Like it's very zen. It's very chop wood, carry water just do it excellently just because like why like what are you gonna wait to be excellent oh this isn't worth excellent well then then whatever is gonna be worth excellent right and one of the biggest breakthroughs i had was when it dawned on me that at the same time right like i knew these things but to know and not to do is not to know so i knew these things but separately right the minute i put them together i re i knew that you get what you think about most of the time you get what you focus on right like you, I manifestation but i also didn't think about the fact that for a lot of the time i was being really focused on what i didn't want right like oh i don't want a nine to five job i don't want to just be a cog in a wheel i don't want to marry somebody who's gonna forget about me and like you know right i, I like dude i was <laughs> what am I doing? Right. And it dawned on me and I went, Whoa, Whoa, Whoa. I am thinking about what I don't want all the time. Why that's what you're going to get. That? That's what you're that, getting. That's if what that's what, what you're getting. thinking. So I said, <laughs> Shit. stop. Right. Yeah. And I did that Tony Robbins thing and I put a, ba a, 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 a rubber band on my wrist and I wouldn't smack it like to hurt. I would just smack, I would just gently twip it, you know, and then I'd say, all right, what do I want? And I'd start to go, yeah, oh yeah. 
people love what I do. I make a difference for people. And right now people are talking about me and they're telling each other about me and they're saying, you got to work with this guy. He'll change your life. And I'd start to picture what I wanted. And guess what? <laughs> I started to get a whole bunch more of that versus mm. all the stuff I was thinking about before that I didn't want. It was so a true. really profound breakthrough for me. Epic. Epic. It really comes down to this. I feel like where focus goes, energy flows. It's not that's my quote, right. but I live by it heavily because if you're focused on the negative, that's where the mind goes. We're focused yeah. on the vision. That's where it's going. Right. And I yeah. try to remind myself of that every day because I'm tempted with all this negative stuff, and road rage and, you know, yeah. the hustle and bustle. It can, it, yeah. it can get easy to lose focus. Right. And right. my mind can get pulled there. Art's, art's seen yeah. it. I can get fired up. But man, let's keep this thing on the positive momentum. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I love all that, man. I mean, all this stuff, like, it sounds like, oh, that's so cool. Oh, well, you're just, you know, but I've been in that negative place too, where I'm like kind of a naysayer, like all this positive BS, you know, <laughs> you're just over overly positive. But yeah. a lot of these things that I'm like, and, and mentalities that I'm immersed in now are kind of cl cliche, but that's the thing is like, when I'm appreciating the moment, like right now, I honestly believe, and I think about it all the time, I'm in the best years of my life. And like, I'm like driving to the podcast studio. I'm like, this is, I'm in the best years of my life. And I start getting super stoked and just appreciating my friends, my family, all my opportunities yes. that I have right now, be yes. able to talk to great people like you. And, and like, once you break that mentality of thinking about the things that you don't want or the things that bother you or upset you, get all that crap out of your head. That's wasted energy. It's wasted space. Yeah. You can, you can be focusing on, on things that, you know, and it takes that mentality shift. It takes practice and that's okay. Like what, when you really want to like focus on these things and use proper affirmations, which we covered a lot on this podcast, mm -hmm. but it, it takes three months. It takes six months. Sometimes it takes a year. You, you have to the stay committed asking you, are you yeah. serious? Yeah. You got to make really that commitment to that new yeah. thought process and really tell yourself, no, you, you have to fight the internal battle. Yeah. Like let's go to war with ourselves every day. Put on our, our armor and go to war. Let's go. And yeah. I like what you said there. The universe is constantly asking us, are you ready? Are you really wanting to do this? Cause yeah. I feel that I feel the test. I feel them coming constantly. It, you know, what's the next fire we got to put out. What's the next challenge, the next hurdle I got to jump over and we're going to get it done. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I, I, that's another one of the things like when I was younger, I don't know what the deal was, but I had some sort of a chip on my shoulder as I already copped to, but it was bigger than just hard skills, soft skills. I was just really ready to take things as an insult if I mm -hmm. could possibly, you know, and I was really, I was, I, uh, I, so here's, I don't know how to say what I was, but here's, here's the, one of the breakthroughs for me was it dawned on me a while ago that when I act like a jerk to somebody like honking them or, you know, drive up or, you know, whatever, or, or be like, act like a jerk in line at the airport or whatever, you know, like, and I'm all, like, I noticed that I can still get in this kind of like me, 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 I'm small. I need this. I can let me in front, you know, like, <laughs> right? but whenever I do that, let whenever I act out on that, mm -hmm. I always look back on it and realize that of the two of us that were in that altercation, whatever it was like, there's pretty much no question that I have the most advantages that I got the most love that I got the most free ride that I got them right. Like I need to be the bigger person. I just really need to be the bigger person, you know, and having acted badly and really gotten that a few times really hard in my face has made me. Has you weren't me being humble, touch. John. What's that? You weren't being humble. I wasn't being humble. And, and, you know, there's that great saying, be kind for everyone is waging a great battle. And I have no idea what battle they're waging is, but it's probably mm. 
more existential and bigger and harder than anything I'm dealing with. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just in that one moment, I would like to uh, just, you know, solidarity with, with Ukraine and what's going out there. Yeah, and yes, you know, it's, 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 it's wild right now, man. And, and it's so true. Like, Let's uh, like, like if someone's getting upset at you on your day, like, let's not be reactive. Like maybe they're just projecting a little bit. Maybe they're a family member projecting. just passed or something, you, you know? So it's like, don't take things personally, you know? No, they're never reacting to you. Adult people don't get mad at other adult people. Adult people get triggered because what somebody just did reminds them of when they were a little kid and they didn't have any control over anything. And that's why they act like that. It's not what you did. It's what you did that reminded them of something that happened to them in the past, right? Yeah, so true. Very relatable too. I mean, I, I really came from the same kind of chip on my shoulder, you know, came out here to Colorado from New England and I was just angry. Arthur met me at that time. I was angry at the world, John. I didn't even yeah. really know why, you know, I was bullied in high school and I just yeah. felt like I had something to prove and I was willing to take on anybody. I looked for opportunities. I, that's the thing is I look for an opportunity to get mad at somebody to, to create and bring energy that wasn't necessary. And yeah. so I can heavily relate to getting, you know, to feeling that and getting through that. It took me yeah. years. I'm in my, my mid thirties now, and I'm just finally starting to understand what the hell was I doing? Well, you know, I mean, I think it's, a, I think it's more common among men. Um, I think women are angry, but in a different way and for different reasons. Um, and I think that as men in particular, I'm talking bell curve. I don't mean to insult anybody. I'm just, you know, bell curve, male experience, America right now. I don't think we get taught to honor our emotions. We Absolutely get taught not. to shove them down and think that any emotional display is wrong. And that's one of the things I work with my clients on a lot is mm. no, 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 no. Right. Like, my my fundamental overlay on emotions it comes from neurobiology because if you damage somebody's logical part of their brain they may not be super logical or have great success in logic things but they can still totally live their life they can still live a fulfilling life figure out what to do in the morning what they want it right but if you damage the emotional part of their brain or if they damage the emotional part of their brain in an accident or something um that's how this gets figured out um people can't even figure out whether to put their socks on or their underwear first and they just are stuck you know so that the emotional part of our brain the, the emotions that we feel are an incredibly important piece of our like gps system and what how i think of it is that the emotions are in the the navigator seat Right. And I'm never going to let them get into the pilot seat. Right. I don't want mm. the emotions driving, but I, I absolutely honor them in the navigator seat. I mean, we, we have a thing here on DCPC that we call the, the modern man. And, uh -huh. you know, this is this is 2022. The modern man is allowed to cry. You know, and, and, and we should like I've I've busted yeah. tears on this podcast so yeah. many times having yeah. a meaningful conversation that means something to me. And I'm like, yeah, you know, that's really hitting right now. And that's OK. That's that's perfect, because you, the, the more that you can seal and the more that you, you keep pushing in, like it's it's never going to fix itself. Everything has to be spread out on the table, revealed. And, and you have to sort through things. And guess what? You're never going to be able to sort through things if you're not acknowledging your emotions yes and if you don't if you're if you are not willing to feel your emotions and to express them and to cry when you feel that and to to have joy and all the other things that's not a full rich life that's just not you know and and i think that it's really great that you guys have that on this podcast because I think that we need to see that modeled more by people that we respect so that, cause you know, when you do, I mean, look, everybody really does want to have their emotions and they want to talk about the places they failed and what they learned, but everybody's terrified to do that. 
So it's a great leadership opportunity. You know, the, the buffet table is not a great leadership opportunity. I'll go first, you know, follow me, right? Yeah, but anybody would go first at the buffet table. But when it comes to sharing those, those failures and what you learned, and when it comes to like letting your emotions up and fully experiencing them and letting them go through you, people are terrified to do that. But if you go first, they'd love to go second or third or fourth or fifth or we'll close the bar down and no one will forget that conversation for the rest of their life but who's gonna start it yeah because we're all scared right that's a leader scared of what though what why do you think people are scared though of exposing yourself like what, what do you think it is you know i think that it's um i think that it's fear of being perceived as weak and i think it's a whole bunch of of just hundreds of years of like, you know, not ever having to be the chance to talk to a therapist until pretty recently. Right. And like all these men who, who like, I mean, cause that stuff comes down through the ages. You know, I worked with Dolph Lundgren on his TEDx talk and he got beaten by his dad. Well, guess what? Dolph Lundgren put his foot down and didn't pass that on to his kids and really had a big breakthrough in at a certain point in his life with like stopping all those things that he was acting out himself. But guess what? I don't think it started with his dad. I think that goes back all the way through history, thousands of years and just finally ended with Dolph. Right. Because yeah. look, we're scared. We're, we're like, we, live in a shack and we don't know if we're going to have enough food and whoever tells us how to, you know, like, so here I am this man and I got, think I got to look tough and I think and I can't ever let people know I'm weak and I can't admit anything. And you, you know, I, I just think it, it came just through evolution. And I think that we're seeing a better way now. Yeah. And listen, if I got a fight, I'll cry after the fight, right? Like, I mean, if I got to do something, I'm not going to not do what I'm doing so I can cry. But when there's those moments that I can go ahead and cry, even while in the middle of the fight, right? I'll have a good cry and then I'll get back to the fight. I mean, whatever. But I think it's really, really important to experience your emotions. I also think it's another reason why men die so much younger than women is because we don't, right? It's true. We're, we're, you know, kind of taught with, with societal pressure and social media to just push it down, deny your feelings, act like you have answers, right? Yeah. I mean, that's kind of the, the, the norm and what's expected. So when you see something different from that, people are a little bit alarmed, like, well, wait a second, yeah. I can see what you're saying. They perceive it as weakness, but yeah. we have an opportunity here to, to flip that. Like you were saying, it's okay to show yeah. the bad days and be upset, cry, get angry, you know, I, I've been known to throw cans around, flip tables. I'm not recommending yeah. that, but that's how I express yeah. emotion. I got to get it out or something mm -hmm. bad's going to happen, you know? Yep. Well, you know, when I went down to do my training for, you know, Navy Special Operations Explosive Ordnance Disposal Group 1, I was really scared about all this stuff that's in my training about showing your emotions and talking about your failures and what you learned and being real and being vulnerable. Right. I'm like, yeah, right. they're going to laugh me out of the freaking room. You know, like these guys can disassemble me with one hand, you know? Um, <laughs> but it was one of the places where that stuff made the biggest difference, I think. And I had a whole bunch of seasoned warriors that were not in any way, shape or form girly men, you know, or whatever Arnold Schwarzenegger calls them or, or Saturday Night Live. Like these were some of the most powerful, strong, masculine men I've ever met. And a number of them told me, John, we need more of this. This was mm. fabulous. Th thank well, cause you. Because that's a challenge that they're not they're not normally faced with, like. You know, they're, they're faced with the physical challenges and overcoming physical things and and the mental toughness to overcome things as well. But the mental vulnerability to that, that's a different type of challenge. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. When we mm. process things as human beings through talking about it and and 
it's one of the kind of unfortunate things I think about, you know, the silent professionals and we don't talk about it. Right. I mean, well, okay, Lucy, you don't have to tell everybody. And if, you know, certainly don't give away any operational security details, but that's how you're going to process this stuff and not, you know, that's how people work through PTSD is discussing what went on, not shoving it down, you know? Yeah. So um, I, I've known a lot of, I, I didn't serve myself, but I I've known a lot of people that served and I support all the vets and, and all the women in, in, in the uh, service as well. You know, it's women's day, um, yes. but all, all the vets, um, man. And, and I've, I've heard some crazy stories, man, where like one of my buddies, he was talking to me about like, you know, the, the handgun he had pur purchased was starting to get rusted in the barrel because how often he would hold it in his mouth and stuff. And like, and like, you know, I just, you know, wanted to be yeah. there for them as, as much as yeah. I could in that moment and just let, let them talk about it, man. Because, no. you know, so, so if, but I, where I'm going with that is if, if you didn't serve or you did serve and, and you know, somebody that served and, you know, maybe just give them a call, you know, maybe yeah. just, and, and hear them out a little bit Check and just, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just listen, man. Cause yeah. you, you know, it, it can be a tough, cold, lonely world, especially when you don't have anybody to express yourself to. And, yeah. and maybe you could be that person that can, can offer some relief to somebody in that position, you know? Yeah. True. You know, there's a woman that I'm friends with that I've worked with. Who's a really brilliant uh, therapist in this arena. Her name is Dr. Shauna Springer. And she's on LinkedIn. She's written a book. Uh, in fact, I should I should just find the name of that book really quick. I'll I'll do that while we're talking. Um, Let's plug it. But um, you know, that's a really a really important thing. And um, she had this concept called a warrior box that is just fabulous. And what they did is they talked to. Um, so her book is called warrior and, uh, it says often the first story we hear is not the story. Sorry. Whoops. It's flipping through here. So often the story we hear is not the story we need to understand. The first story is often a test of whether we can be trusted to hear more. Mm. <laughs> Pretty good point. And she and a colleague created this thing called the warrior box, which is an ammo box. And at the bottom of the ammo box, you put your safe key, right? The key to your safe and then to your gun safe. And then on top of that, you put in pictures and letters and reminders of all the things that you would die for, like your family and people put that piece of shrapnel that was the, taken out of them and they put in all these meaningful things into I, their I see where box. this is going. Yeah. Mm hmm because the things that you would be willing to die for are now the things that you would be willing to live for. So wow. when they go to get that key, they got to dig through all this stuff they'd be willing to live for first. And it really makes a big difference. I think she's saved a lot of wow. lives with that concept. That's a great concept. Terrific. I'd like to read more about that. You said it was warrior War That's warrior the... box and her, and warrior she's box. got a website called uh doc shauna springer.com okay doc doc shauna and it's s-h-a-u-n-a springer.com and Excellent. she's a really really brilliant she's very good at speaking to warriors uh i think a lot of therapists are not as good because they don't understand the, it's just different mindsets but shauna gets the warrior mindset she respects it in a way that i think many therapists don't and it's is absolutely amazing to talk to her she was she was on my podcast i think i'm gonna have to go double check because if she hasn't been i gotta get her on <laughs> <laughs> well if she was i'm gonna be listening to that very soon yeah good stuff i mean a, a lot of important things i mean th these are the conversations that that we really enjoy and that we really love to have here because you know there, there's always a lot of layers to life you know there's yeah so many layers to just every single day and even just feeling motivated to get out of bed and, and, you know, just do the right thing today. Sometimes that's the hard thing to do. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's so important to talk about all this stuff because everybody's struggling, you know, everybody has their problems going on and everybody has the capability to overcome that. 
you know, yes. but, but you have to stop. Like what you said earlier, you have to stop thinking about what you don't want. You have to start yeah. thinking about who you want to be, mm. you know? Yeah. So what one, we would like to ask you one thing though, that is a pre-scripted question that we usually ask every guest is if, if you had one piece of advice to offer humanity, so everybody could be better tomorrow, what would that piece of advice be? Can I tell it to you in the form of a story? That'd be great. So right around that time when I had almost died of an autoimmune disease and I had lost my company after raising $80 million, I was in this place where I was just thinking, I'm going to be a loser forever. I'm never going to figure this out. No one's ever going to love me. I'm going to be alone for the rest of my life. I'm just damaged goods. Like what's wrong with me, you know? And I would wake up in the middle of the night. And if you, if I opened my mouth and stuck my tongue out, it would look like Play-Doh that had been just shoved up against the back of my teeth at high pressure, you know? And, and I was grinding my teeth and, and I just, you know, I mean, it was not a good time. And a coach that I had at that time realized what was going on with me. And she was like, whoa, 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 John, whoa. When you go down that tunnel of beating yourself up and thinking you're not good enough and thinking you're never going to be good enough and all that stuff, there is no light at the end of that tunnel. In fact, there's nothing worth going in there for at all. So I want you to promise me right now that whenever you notice you're in that tunnel, if it's been a day, a week, a month, it doesn't matter. The minute you notice you're in that tunnel, promise me that you will just back out. And I said, okay, Candace, I promise. And then she said, here's what I want you to do instead. I want you to live in the listening of the people who love you because who you are is not who you think you are. Who you are is who they think you are because that's how you actually show up in the world. And I just sat there and cried for a while and uh, thought about all the people that did love me and that lit up when I walked in the room, you know, and people don't do that. They're not faking, you know, <laughs> right. When they do yeah. that. And um, so I really took that on and I, and then I had another deepening of that soon after where I realized that, you know, part of that going into that tunnel for me, was really beating myself up and just being with myself in a way that I would never be with people that I loved and respected other people. Right? I'd never do that to them. And I'd never let them do that to each other either, you know? And then I realized, okay, I'm one of those people. So I can't do that to me either. Right. And I really want to be a safe space for, for my, family and my loved ones and my clients and anybody that I, sh that shows up in my space, I want to be a safe space for them. And I realized I couldn't be a safe space for anybody else till I was a safe space for me. Mm. So on the days when it was hard to do for myself, I would do it because of that. And I just kept working on strengthening that muscle of n not only not going into that tunnel, and not beating myself up, but, you know, loving myself and forgiving myself and, and getting back in touch with the pieces of myself that I thought were worthwhile. Right. Cause I mean, it was a real blow to my self worth to raise $80 million, have 500 people around the country that I felt depended on me and then have it all just implode in one day, you know, and, so there was a lot of forgiving of myself I had to do and a lot of going back in and loving the dark parts and all that. But, uh, you know, now almost 20 years later, I don't suffer from that autoimmune disease the same way for a long time I did, but I don't anymore. And, uh, and I think a lot of it has been taking that advice and then just expanding it and, and loving myself and forgiving myself and making space for myself and being kind to myself. I think in autoimmune disease, it's interesting because that's me 
attacking my own body. And it's still real. The pieces of skin are still slopping off. The pain's real. The damage is real. But I think it all starts here, you know. That's what I decided for myself. And so that's why I spent a lot of time loving myself, being kind to myself, and, and trying to live in the listening of the people who love me, you know. When I don't feel like, when I don't, when I'm having a tough day, I look over at that letter of recommendation that Oscar wrote for me, you know, and I read it again and I go, well, if he thinks that's who I am, then I just need to step up and be that guy. You yeah. Know? That, thank you so much for sharing that story. Yeah. yeah. Great story and great way to circle back into how to, you know, we always like to ask a piece of advice to better humanity. And what I gather from that is, you know, don't back yourself in too deep, you know, really focus on the things that matter. And if you get yourself in too deep into that sinkhole, reevaluate yeah. your situation, pull it back. What matters to you? Focus on what matters. Yeah. Focus on the things that bring you fulfillment and joy. Yeah. And love yourself, you know, like, like it, there's just no value in beating yourself up or talking negatively to yourself. I mean, listen, if you screw something up, do a debrief, take note, make changes and then keep going, right? Don't keep that thing around. For sure. That's, that's, it's so true, man. And it's, it's like relieving to hear that a little bit too, at the same time, because it, it, it just, everybody out there is struggling a little bit. You're like yeah. you, you're not alone in struggling. You might be alone, <laughs> at all. but you're not alone in struggling. And so like, we're all in this together. And, and John, like, we're so thankful to have had time to speak with you and get to know you. I would love it if we could keep talking a little bit once we get off mic a little bit and just, you know, kind of shoot the breeze. Um, and everybody check out his podcast, yeah. you, you know, it was um, how to speak like a leader. It's speak like a leader dot show. S speak like a leader. And, Every, yeah. Check that out. And we're going to include all, of course, everything in the show notes down below, John, you know, and okay, the listeners, cool. they know where to go. If you're watching on YouTube. You just scroll down. You're going to find all the good stuff. And most importantly, we love to have repeat guests, John. And I know at some point you're going to be in Denver, Colorado. I know you love to ski. This is a skiing yeah. area. You got to come I out to Denver, in come Salt in studio. Lake, so I'm not far. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. I think your trip to the mile high might be in the future. Yeah. You're going to make a visit. You're going to be sitting in that chair right there right across on. the table from us. And uh, on that note, everybody, we love you. We love all the listeners. Be good to yourselves. You know, y'all deserve it for sure. And John Bates, you'll be back with us soon, brother. All right. Thank you. Appreciate you having me. In, and uh, I, I really love what you guys are doing. Keep it up. Thank you.